welcome back to my channel. I spent a long time figuring out how to connect and do everything that I wanted it to. An OLED display, an I2C OLED display, an RFID reader, and an Arduino Nano. And at first it started out with how to connect all of that to the LCD display. But if you will just take a minute and vent with me or just like side with me on this, okay? Look at this. Like, can you see all those pins right here look at this my gosh like the labor to connect them alone stresses me out this one only has four you see that is why i opted for the oled instead of this outdated lcd this is the arduino nano but i am going to show you guys how i connected everything this is the antenna this is the rc522 rfid antenna the positive voltage that drives the antenna because you have to power the antenna right with power it's only 3.3 volts and the arduino has a pin that supplies that so i just connected it directly to the pin i did not connect the 3.3 volt pin from the arduino to the breadboard instead i connected the arduino's 5 volt pin to the breadboard the oled just has the 5 volt to the 5 volt breadboard and that the arduino is powering or supplying I'm gonna show you all this. So this is my setup. This is the RFID antenna and this is the OLED screen and that's the Arduino Nano and this is my chaotic wiring. So this is the dongle and I have it set so that it'll say unlocked for a validated or specified code. I'll show you and explain that when we get to the code part. And then using another source of RFID, this has a different code on it. So they don't have the same code. If you buy one of these, it'll come with two cards. It'll come with one of these blue things and then it'll come with a card and they both have different codes. So you'll have to key that in and program it. Anyways, okay. This is what happens when you scan a card that is not accepted or does not unlock it. It'll just ask you to scan it. So it's a scan RFID for those who are not English speakers. And it'll show you the UID code. Now, I don't really like that it shows the code, but then it goes away quickly. I made it go away quickly because the original code didn't have it erase the UID. After a little while, it had it. So as soon as you scan, it left this part on there. And I don't like that because that code is the secret key. It's like the password. It's literally like an analogy would be if I were typing in my password to my computer and I logged in and then the computer would say, you are now logged in. Your password is blah, blah, blah. And it would just explain my password. Well, it, you just gave the password right here. So now anyone can, you know, with decent hacker skills can just get that ID, write it down, go make it and then hack into this. So if you were really using this for security purposes, I would not recommend putting your UID on here. So anyways, you can use other things rather than an Arduino Nano. I just like it because it's small and versatile. My cat's meowing, sorry. So the code part i'm gonna have the code and everything in the description also on my github for you to download i went to this website electronicslab.com and found this guy named nick's code anyway so i copied that right thank you nick for your code and contribution to the public for that and then I edited it because I like to do that and make it my own. Here is my version. I have added this little pin out up here. Other code and scripts were really good too. This one I've been doing a lot of research on. I found this to be the best one. I added a pin out like the other script had. Made it very obvious. So it's very hard to get confused, okay? For those who are beginners. I don't know if this is deprecated or not. If I need to add um, the OLED reset to negative one. I don't have it connected to a specific pin or anything. So I think negative one just reverts it back to the Arduino's reset resistor. Anyways, I'm not sure. I think this is deprecated where it says define screen width and height. Uh, I just added it anyways because in case it is, I don't know. It wouldn't hurt and it didn't cause problems, so just keep it there. I mean, if it bothers you guys, you can remove it. So this is where you would add the code, right? So right here where it says this is the stored UID. Okay, so what is a stored UID? Well, a stored UID is when you buy this thing, this thing comes with the key fob dongle and then a little card. These things have their own UID or code. Think of it like a password, right? So how are these uniquely identified? Ah. So that's what UID stands for. Okay, I just got that. Moving on. Um, yeah, so they're, they're different. So this one, this 
unique ID is different from this unique ID. And currently this code only accepts one ID. This is just a quick, simple getting started tutorial. I'll make another one on how to add more users to implement in this code. I don't want to have to keep copying other people's code. So I want like one file. So I only have this code, the key fob code entered in the system. One thing that I will note, and this is kind of going into the troubleshooting slash error codes part of the video. But one thing I noticed when I was doing all this was I added a zero right here in front of the um, so 48 comma 013 comma 137 comma 34 why am I reading all those numbers anyway I added a zero right here because the code the UID has that when the script is actually processed that zero even though this is the correct code and it went through the loop-de-doo it didn't print the unlocked message and I was trying to figure out why because it should say unlocked and everything was fine and then I just just took away a zero sometimes things get weird anytime you're iterating through like a series of things so how do you know the UID of your cards? Well, there are many easy scripts on how to do that. And let me also explain how to get it all set up. So I'm going to open Arduino, open up Arduino, and then you're going to go to, you're going to go to, what was it, tools. When you are setting all this up, make sure you have the correct board and the processor is, I mean, it's usually like default, but you know how to do all that. Just click one, just click one, play around with it. Port, I mean, if something plugged into your computer usually it does all this for you before we get started with anything any script any example code you have to install the library what is the library it's basically like your computer won't know what example to pull from if you don't install the library that has the examples of it for it in it anyways so go to tools and then manage libraries You're going to type in the library manager in the search bar. You're going to type in MFRC522. That is the, or at least the RC522 is the model of your RFID module. When you have the whole list of um, MFRC522, you're going to hit install, install, install um, on a couple of things. I mean, I went ahead and did a few. Like, you can read the description and just figure, you know, assume which one best suits your needs. Once you have a couple libraries installed, now you can go to file examples. You can change the UID. I've never done that or at least not yet. I don't think I need to. Read in new ID. Okay, so read new ID. Originally, you would have had to install a script to get the UID and then you would have to write the UIDs down. You don't even need to do any preliminary downloads or anything because when you install this on your Arduino Nano, you can just go to serial monitor and then when you scan it, see, it tells you the UIDs right there. Boom, boom, and then all the info, dude. Pretty neat. Now, the other cool thing is you can connect all this to a um, database like Firebase, Google's Firebase, I think is, is it Google's Firebase? Anyways, um, it's a free like database software thing, and then you can have it displayed or like logged. You can also connect the RFID to Wi-Fi modules, have it wirelessly transmit this information. So the Arduino Nano is connected to my computer via the USB, and that's how it's transmitting this data in the serial monitor, which is like its direct monitor. I mean, you can't connect an Arduino Nano directly to an HDMI cord and plug it into a computer monitor and see this is what I'm getting at this little serial monitor only portrays the tiny bits of data that it, it's programmed to properly receive it and display it. That's all you need to do. Plug it up, run and test the code. Just hit upload and boom, it'll be there. You don't need to compile it before you upload. You can just hit upload and it compiles it for you automatically. So works like a charm. And also my thing is weird. This says, this is not correct. It is not OX3D for the 128 by 64. So that's confusing because I am using 128 by 64 OLED display and it is a dress of 0X3C. This thing, it's not the skinny ones and it is 3C, not 3D. So I changed Nick's code here a little bit. I shortened a few things to save space 
on the screen, but also to just compile code that was redundant into a single function. I did that with the display main graphic. So here it's called, and the display main graphic is right here. I also added comments to help better understand and, and interpret the code. You can also tweak the code too. For those of you who want to go over the code, the display main graphic is where it keeps scan RFID on the screen. This is the only key that I have listed here. It Currently this code only has input for one code. So it doesn't have like a multi-user authentication program built in it yet. I would have to code that, but it's just a matter of um, creating an array here of more than one array, an array of an array of multiple dimension array. Coding has left my brain. So this code, this UID is only for this dongle. Whereas if I scan this card, it's not able to validate more than one card for now. That is that. So some troubleshooting things. Remove leading zeros in the code. Like if you have 048, not a zero in the middle. Like if this had 103, that would be fine. I hope you've enjoyed this video. More content is coming. So bye.